Hyundai today is the third largest automaker in the world just behind Toyota and Volkswagen in terms of the numbers of cars manufactured. Hyundai Motor Group, which includes Kia and luxury car brand Genesis, has sold more than 7 million cars in 2023, whereas Toyota and Volkswagen Group has sold more than 10 million and 9 million cars respectively. But this wasn't always the case, and in late 1990s, Hyundai sales hit rock bottom, and the situation was so bad that it was about to go bankrupt. And if we zoom out a little more, Hyundai wasn't even a car company when it was first founded by Chung Joo Young back in 1947. It was just a small construction company back in South Korea. However, today it is one of the biggest car companies in the world, working on ambitious projects like robo taxis, hydrogen powered vehicles, EVs, autonomous driving, and flying taxis. So, how did Hyundai change its fate? And how did it go from near bankruptcy to the world's third largest automaker? And how it is planning to transform the world that we all live in? Hyundai was founded back in 1947 as a construction company and Korea had just gained its independence from Japan. After Japan's defeat in the Pacific War in 1945, it was split into two countries. South Korea, which was being administered by the US at the time, and North Korea, which was being administered by the Soviet Union. The ideological differences and cold war between the US and the Soviet Union resulted in a war between the two Koreas in 1950, which ended in 1953. And after the Korean War, South Korea was amongst the poorest of nations with an average income of less than $2 per person per week and today it is one of the richest countries in the world with a per capita income of 50,000 plus US dollars. So how did South Korea grow so big so fast? The answer lies in one word, that is chaebols, a system where just a couple of large, family controlled companies control the majority of factors of production, or in other words, controls more than 50% of everything the country produces. But why are we discussing all this over here? It is because Hyundai was a big beneficiary of this travel system in South Korea. And if it wasn't for this system, Hyundai would most probably be just a small construction company somewhere in South Korea. Sing Man Wee, the first president of South Korea, made a bold decision. Instead of nationalizing the industries, he decided to auction off government owned factories and resources that were valued at an estimated $1.5 billion at bargain prices. And companies like Samsung, which was a trading company at the time, and Hyundai were its biggest beneficiaries. By the late 1950s, Hyundai Construction was one of the biggest construction companies in Korea and was a major business partner of the government, aligning its growth strategy with that of the government policies for economic growth. The government in return supported Hyundai by ensuring and underwriting its big and risky projects. In the 1960s, Hyundai started expanding into other businesses within the construction industry by winning highway construction projects and building big cement plants. This aggressive expansion and government support gave Hyundai an edge in the construction business even among its global peers, and soon was getting orders from the Middle East in the 1970s. This success motivated Hyundai to enter into other businesses even if they were unrelated to the construction business, such as the shipbuilding and automobile business. Hyundai in 1967 established Hyundai Motors, making an entry into the automobile business, but it had one small problem. It did not know anything about car manufacturing and initially had lost a lot of money in it and survived on cross subsidies from its parent company, Hyundai Construction. However, Hyundai Motors was soon able to find its ground after collaborating with Japan's Mitsubishi Motors, which helped it accumulate technological and management know-how. Hyundai's first project in the automobile industry was assembling the Ford Coltina under license and had produced more than 800,000 cars. This little stint helped Hyundai gain experience in mass production. The iconic Jojito Jajaro designed the Pony, Hyundai's first independent car. A car known for its affordability became a success especially in the American market, where budget-conscious consumers were drawn to the Pony's low price point. And in 1986, the Excel, a subcompact car even cheaper than the Pony, 
became a runaway success, selling a staggering 169,000 units in the US alone in its first year. The success that Hyundai enjoyed with its cheap affordable cars with the consumers worldwide was short-lived, as reliability issues quickly surfaced, tarnishing Hyundai's reputation and by the late 90s, they were struggling and its annual US sales had plummeted to a meager 90,000 units, a mere 5% of what they had been just a decade earlier. And to add fuel to the fire, Hyundai Motors parent company was also going through some deep troubled waters. By the 1990s, the Hyundai Group had diversified into many unrelated businesses, such as electronics or financial services. In these new businesses, Hyundai just had no chance, as it was already dominated by other rival chairballs, and just remained a second-tier competitor. For example, in the field of electronics, which Hyundai entered in 1963, Samsung was already a king of the market, getting the first mover advantage and Hyundai just couldn't catch up. Hyundai wasn't an exception in this, as by the 80s many other chairballs entered into unrelated businesses. Even Samsung entered into the automobile manufacturing industry, a company later sold to Reynold in 2010. However, the seeds of the crisis were already sown, and when the Asian financial crisis hit in East and Southeast Asia in 1997, it swept through the Korean corporate sector and triggered a liquidity shortage and about half of the top 30 chairballs went bankrupt. Hyundai Group, however, would have easily survived the crisis, as it had many profitable businesses, unlike other chairballs that went bankrupt. But Hyundai expanded too much too fast, as its total assets grew from 19 trillion won in 1991 to 54 trillion won in 1997, and many of these assets were loss making. So Hyundai Group was in deep, deep trouble. And to get out of this financial mess, Hyundai got support from the Korean government and had to sell many unprofitable businesses and focus only on its core business, with Hyundai Motors being the main one. Kia Motors had filed for bankruptcy in 1998, and Hyundai Motors decided to acquire it so as to gain monopoly power in the South Korean car market. A bet at the time may seem as a huge gamble seeing Hyundai's own financial condition. But today we know what it did for the company. And to get out of the crisis at the time, Hyundai Motors decided to study the leading Japanese car manufacturers as they were the benchmark of quality at the time. Hyundai engineers spent countless hours benchmarking quality standards against industry leaders like Toyota and Honda, analyzing assembly line processes and implementing rigorous testing procedures. Hyundai then actively started recruiting experienced engineers and production specialists from other established automakers. And to show how confident they were about the reliability of their cars, they launched a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty in the early 2000s. The gamble paid off, as by 2004, JD Power awarded Hyundai its first-ever initial quality study award, and today we all know how big the Hyundai brand is, and is no longer associated with cheap cars but with that of quality and reliability. Having established itself as a reliable brand, Hyundai today is working on the future of mobility and has pledged to make a $35 billion investment by 2025, especially for EVs, autonomous vehicles and robotics. In 2016, Hyundai unveiled the Ionic with a hybrid, plug-in hybrid and a fully electric variant which marked the beginning of a new era for the company, showing its ambition to become a leader in the EV sector. And in 2020, Hyundai revealed the Electric Global Modular Platform, or EGMP, designed specially for battery EVs, which offered many advantages such as increased range, faster charging, scalability, and flexibility. It is because of this EGMP that the Ionic 5 was able to offer a range exceeding 300 miles on a single charge. It also allowed Hyundai to create a diverse range of sedans and SUV like the Genesis GV60 to high-performance cars like the Ionic 6 GT. Hyundai is also heavily investing in AI, robotics and automation with focus on creating smart factories for production of passenger cars, logistic vehicles and also robots to do various kinds of household tasks. 
Hyundai is also working on a self-driving technology by using advanced algorithms, artificial intelligence, advanced sensors and cameras so that the car can see and understand its surroundings by collecting data from various sources. Self-driving or autonomous driving can be categorized into five levels, with level one being driver assistance, while driver is still in charge of the vehicle, but the car can perform some basic functions such as cruise control. Whereas in level five, the car is completely self-driving and does not require any human intervention. So far, Hyundai has released level two self-driving features in cars such as Ionic 5. Hyundai has also partnered with various companies such as Aptiv, Aurora and Pony.ai to develop level 5 autonomous vehicles within the next few years. Hyundai is also working on flying taxis through its subsidiary Supernull and is planning to revolutionize transportation by using air mobility. Although the technology is still in early stages, there will come a time when this will be the primary way we commute. So guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, then do like, share and subscribe for more such amazing videos. Thank you and bye bye.